Hi, my name is Kmot. This podcast is brought to you by Majuba TVET College, and it specifically relates to financial accounting and file for South African TVET colleges. In this presentation, I'm going to tackle question 4.1.2 from June 2016 question paper. It deals with incomplete records. Incomplete records are contained in Module 4 of Financial Accounting N5 textbook that is used at Majua TVET College. I'm hoping that at the end of the presentation, students will achieve the following subject and learning outcomes, that is, transform income, incomplete records to a system of double entry, use the accounting equation to determine the opening balance of capital, Calculate the net profit through the owner's equity. As I've mentioned, I'm going to do question 4 of June 2016, and I'm going to use the Excel spreadsheet for the purpose of calculations. I quickly want to take you to the question paper. There you go. I'd like you to focus on question 4. Question 4 related to Cox traders, and we're given information for the financial year ended uh, 28 February 2014 and 2015. Remember in this presentation, I'm, I'm going to do requirement 4.1, 4.2, which relates to the note to the equity. I've already tackled 4.1.1, and 4.1.1 were required to draw the financial statement, and I specifically uh, drew the balance sheet. The purpose of drafting the balance sheet was to determine uh, the missing figure, which in this case was capital for 2015. We we're actually also supposed to determine the net profit, but I'm only going to do, do the calculations of the net profit in 4.1.2 because I'm going to need the balance relating to of capital relating to 2014. The balance relating to capital for 2014 was not given, but however, I'm going to show you how we go about in calculating that balance. Once we've established that balance, we're going to take it and we're going to take the drawings as provided for 2014 to determine the net profit. Okay, without wasting your time, let's just quickly go to the note. Before I even, okay, yeah, no, let me, I'm just quickly going to take you to the note. There we go. That's the note. Uh, the capital, uh, that's the note to equity. Uh, it relates to uh, the capital specifically. That's what we're going to do. I just want to zoom it a little. There you go. I'm going to zoom it to that extent. So the capital, if you want to provide the note to the capital, it will be made of the balance at the beginning of the year. I'm just say I'm gonna just gonna be why it's the balance at the beginning of the year, and we're going to add net profit. If it's a net loss, please we're going to deduct it. However, I'm gonna assume that we're gonna get a net profit, so I'm gonna add it. If it's a loss, I'll make uh, required adjustments, and we're going to less drawings. That's essentially how we do the capital note relating to a sole proprietor. I quickly want to take you to the question. We were given amount of drawings for 2015, so I'm just going to take that amount and I'm going to use it. Remember we less, so I'm simply going to say minus 4,200. That relates to the amount of drawings. Remember we've already determined the capital in 4.1, we already determined the capital by drafting the balance sheet for 2015. So I'm essentially going to say that equals to, that's the capital for 2015. I'm going to go to the balance sheet. That's that amount that we're looking for. So that's essentially our capital. There you go. As you can see, we have two missing figures. That figure is missing. I'm just going to highlight in yellow. It relates to the balance and the net profit as well. It's missing. I'm going to highlight just in any other color uh, read. So we've got two missing figures. In that regard, we're not able to take that amount and deduct that amount or, or add that amount in order to determine the balance because 
we wouldn't know what amount that amount is attributable to. So we've got two missing figures. So instead of uh, taking that amount and taking that amount into account in determining the balance and the net profit, we're gonna go to our information and what we're going to do, we're going to try to determine the balance of the capital. So I, I recommend that we employ what we call the accounting equation. Remember the accounting equation says A equals to O plus L. A stands for assets, O stands for owner's equity, L stands for liabilities. Um, in question twenty, in 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 question four point one, point one, you are actually required to draft the financial statement. But I'm not sure if you are aware that you could have employed the accounting equation. But the question was specific that you should actually draw the financial statement. The set of financial statement con consists of the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow amongst the others. So y you could only do the balance sheet because all those items related to the balance sheet. So you couldn't have employed the accounting equation. However, in this question specifically where we want to calculate the balance, we can actually use the accounting equation. I think it's quicker to do the accounting equation. If you wanted, you could have presented the balance sheet as your calculation of determining the capital. But I recommend that you do the accounting equation because I think it's quicker to determine the capital amount um, as a missing figure uh, by employing uh, the accounting equation. I'm quickly going to show you how we're going to go about. Uh, let's go to our presentation uh, sheet, uh, your, your, our spreadsheet. As you can see, I'm going to use uh, the accounting equation. Instead of writing descriptions, I'm just going to write amounts. All assets will be classified under this column relating to assets, and all items relating to equity will be classified under that column. And those relating to liabilities will be classified under that column. Let's quickly go to the given information and identify line items that impact the accounting equation. The first, remember, I'm only doing 2014. The first relates to loan. I'm not going to take it into account. Bank, as you know, bank, it's an asset. I'm going to write it there. Moving along swiftly, the next item relates to um, equipment. Equipment, it's also an asset. I'm going to write it there in the accounting equation. The next item relates to uh, accumulated depreciation. Remember, accumulated depreciation uh, has to reduce an asset basically to arrive at the carrying value of the asset. That's the cost price. So we're going to take to determine the carrying value. We're going to less accumulated depreciation. I recommend that you less it from there. There you go. Otherwise, if you didn't have, if you didn't do that, you'd have to put accumulated depreciation, and you'd have to minus accumulated depreciation there. Moving along swiftly, the next item relates to prepaid expense. A prepaid expense uh, is actually part of your uh, other trade uh, receivables. Remember, a business has prepaid, but they haven't uh, obtained a benefit. Uh, resulting from, from, from the expense. Therefore, this is treated as trade, uh, other trade uh, receivables. Other trade receivables are assets, hence we've taken it to uh, that column. The next item relates to accrued expenses. Accrued expenses are what we call expense payable. The entity has an obligation to pay, however, they haven't paid, but they have actually already um, incurred uh, the expense in the sense that they have the obligation to pay. Therefore, it's a liability. I'm going to take it to liabilities. The next item, it's investment. It's investment. It's what we call a financial asset. It's an asset, so we're going to take it there. Debtors, as you know, debtors are considered to be assets, current assets to be specific. Creditors are liabilities. I'm going to take it there. Trading stock, certainly it's an asset, it's a current asset, inventory, it's called. The last item relates to cash flow, cash flow, it's a cash and cash equivalent, it's a current asset, I'm going to take it there. We write at the end, is there anything else we left out, nothing else, so I'm going to show you 
how we're going to determine the amount of capital. Please allow me to quickly do that. I want to introduce that there. I also want to introduce that there. I want to compute totals. So I'm simply going to say sum of. Okay, there you go. Quickly, there you go. I didn't want that column. I think that column will be confusing. There you go. So let's quickly go do uh, our balances. Our assets at the moment equals to 97,735. It's supposed to be equal to our equities. You can clearly see that it's not equal. It's supposed to be equal to owner's equity plus liabilities. Owner's equity plus liabilities. I just quickly wanted to fix that. But you can clearly see at the moment it's not equal. Our owner's equity is zero liabilities. It's 15,735. Owner's equity plus liabilities at the moment, it's 15,735, which is not equals to, which is not at all equals to our assets. So essentially what we need to do is we need to determine owner's equity by a balancing assets and owner's equity plus assets how are we gonna do the balance we're simply going to take that amount i'm simply going to take the 97,000, and i'm going to less i'm going to less i'm going to less that cell there you go we arrive at the value of 82,000. if you add the 82,000 plus the 15,735 it will give you 97 725. Remember the purpose of this exercise was to determine owner's equity. I'm quickly going to do that. The purpose of this exercise was to determine owner's equity. Owner's equity in this in this case will be regarded to be capital. I'm going to take that amount, 82,000. I'm simply going to say equals to, it's equal to that amount. So we've determined that our amount of capital is 82,000. The only missing figure now is net profit. If I quickly take you to the question, 4.11 require us to do the net profit, but we're only calculating it in 4.2 via the note, and 4.1.2 require us to do uh, the equity. That's exactly what we're doing. So essentially for us to determine the net profit, we're going to work backwards. We're going to say equals to, we're going to take the 95,000, we're going to less the 82,000, Remember, this we have to add back. Uh, in order to make sure that we arrive at the correct value, we need to place a minus because that figure is already a minus. There you go. I'm not sure if you understood. You can do it via the calculator. Remember, we're taking that amount, we lessen that amount, we're adding that amount. There you go. Our net profit uh, comes to 17000 632. I'm going to remove that because I only wanted to highlight to show you that we had missing figures. There you go. You've achieved the note as required in 4.1.2 and you're able to determine the balance and you're able to determine the net profit as required by 4.1.1. Thank you. This is where my presentation ends. If there are any questions, please post them via WhatsApp on my cell number or you can actually use my email address. Thank you.